This is the pre-lab discussion for experiment number four, preparation of synthetic banana oil. In this reaction, we're going to take acetic acid, also known as ethanoic acid. We're going to react it with isopentyl alcohol. It also has some other names, 3-methylbutanol and isoamyl alcohol. We're also going to add a little bit of sulfuric acid as a catalyst. Our product is going to be isopentyl acetate, known as a few other things also, 3-methylbutyl ethanoate, isoamyl acetate, and banana oil. One of the products is also going to be water in this reaction. Overall, this reaction is known as a Fischer esterification, which we're going to learn about later in the semester and again next semester when you take OCHEM 2. The goal of this experiment is to prepare synthetic isopentyl acetate from acetic acid and isopentyl alcohol and then an analyzed equilibrium. Equilibrium because this reaction is in equilibrium. When I finally complete the reaction, I'm going to have some isopentyl acetate, I hope. But I'm also going to have some acetic acid left over and some unreacted isopentyl alcohol. One of the reasons we add excess acetic acid is to push the reaction in the right direction, forcing it to create isopentyl acetate. That would be Le Chatelier's principle, if you remember that from general chemistry. Let's now take a look at the mechanism for this reaction. This is a Fischer esterification, and many of them go by the same type of mechanism. These reactions typically require sulfuric acid as a catalyst. So here would be a representation of my sulfuric acid, this hydronium ion. My acetic acid it has two lone pairs of electrons here, which are a little bit basic, so it can actually pick up that proton in an acid-base reaction. If I draw a resonance structure, notice that I have this carbon down here is a little bit positive, so it's reactive. When I have my isoamyl alcohol in solution, my lone pair of electrons on my alcohol now are attracted to that positive charge and I start to form a bond. So here I have an intermediate product. Notice I have three bonds now to oxygen, making this proton here very acidic. In this case, my base acts, my water acts as a base and it can actually pick off that proton. Now if I look at this, I have a very unstable species here at this proton and so one of these two hydroxy groups here, they act as a base and they react with my acid catalyst to protonate one of those hydroxyl groups. And now it looks like I have water. And if that water were to leave, that's a very stable situation. So water leaves. I now have a carbocation sitting here that is not very stable again. So this proton here is still acidic. My water acts as a base again, picks that off, and I reform my carbon-oxygen double bond, and this is my isopentyl acetate. We're now going to follow the 10 steps to an organic chemistry reaction. I'm going to collect and organize my glassware and chemicals. I'm going to read new techniques at the end of our book. These include washing with water and aqueous sodium bicarbonate, operation 24. Before we distill it, I'm also going to further dry my reaction product with some sodium sulfate, operation 25. Then we're going to do a simple distillation using the Hickman still technique, operation 30A. And finally, we're going to analyze our equilibrium using gas chromatography operation number 37. For safety, we're going to be using isopentyl alcohol as a starting material. Our product is going to be isopentyl acetate. A second starting material is glacial acetic acid. Glacial essentially means there's very, very, very little water in the acetic acid. Sulfuric acid, we're going to use concentrated, sodium bicarbonate, and sodium sulfate. 
The first thing we're going to do is set up our reflex apparatus in the hood. It's very similar to the one we used previously in an earlier experiment. However, this time we're going to use the round bottom flask because we have more material that we need to reflux. We're going to add our reaction components, which are going to be our chemicals. That's isopentyl alcohol, glacial acetic acid, and a sulfuric acid catalyst. We're going to reflux it for an hour and then cool it to room temperature. At that point in our reaction vessel, we're going to have starting materials and products, so we need to separate those. We're going to separate that out by washing our contents with both deionized water and sodium bicarbonate. These will react with the non-organic materials in our solution, and then we can separate those because we'll have an aqueous layer and an organic layer. We're then going to dry our components with sodium sulfate. The sodium sulfate would, will absorb any water that remains and it will still be a solid so we can then decant or suck off the liquid. We're going to use a pasture pipette to remove that liquid from above our solid. For purification, we're going to actually distill the crude banana oil. Again, our banana oil will now contain iso pentyl alcohol and isopentyl acetate. We're going to use a Hickman still here with a round bottom flask. So here is the setup. This picture shows it with a conical flask. We're going to use round bottom and put it over here so we get better contact. We're going to heat it up. As it heats up, the liquid will move up this tube and then it'll condense back down and collect right here. And then at this point here, we will remove our product as it distills. We're going to collect the fraction that distills at 137 to 143. Therefore, we've added a thermometer in here right below the condensation point so that we can measure the temperature as the vapors move up the still. One thing to make sure we don't do is distill to dryness. Sometimes there are actually ethers that form during reactions of alcohols and ethers can be explosive. And so if we dry to stillness, there could be a slight explosion. After we're done distilling, we're going to weigh the banana oil, again, containing isopentyl alcohol, some of our starting material, and our product, isopentyl acetate. We're then going to analyze our product. We're going to obtain a gas chromatogram, GC analysis. GC and separation is based on boiling point and polarity and volatility. And so if we look at our grass chromatograph, here is time. Here is the first peak that came off, and that is going to be our isopentyl acetate because it has a lower, lower boiling point. Then isopentyl alcohol, which is an alcohol and can hydrogen bond. And if we didn't wash our product thoroughly enough, we might even see some acetic acid. It turns out that if we integrate the area underneath each peak, it is proportional to its relative concentration, and we can use that to calculate the percent composition of our product. We're going to do some calculations. Those are, we're going to show those in our report. We're going to document our results. That is in my notebook pages, and we're going to formulate some conclusions and discussion also in your report. So in your report, I want you to comment on the safety precautions for the four main chemicals used in this experiment, isopentyl alcohol, our product isopentyl acetate, glacial acetic acid, and sulfuric acid. List the key observations and conclusions for the four experimental procedures, the reflux, the drying, the distillation, and the GC. List sources of possible yield loss. Use the GC information to calculate the percent composition by mass for the two components. Calculate the theoretical yield. Calculate the percent yield, correcting for composition now, because we determine that using the GC. Complete the end of lab exercises two and four, and submit these to the Blackboard site as a single PDF file.